Psalm 16. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Well, the main theme of today's psalm is there in verse one. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. And uh, the first half of the psalm uh, describes uh, what it is to take refuge in God. Uh, David expresses how he takes refuge in God and God alone. And then the second half of the psalm reflects on what it means uh, to be safe in God. And in the first half of the psalm, as David reflects on what it means to take refuge in God, uh, the emphasis is uh, the Lord is his only confidence. It is in God alone that he trusts. And we see that just by little words that are scattered uh, throughout the first half of the psalm that stress that it is God alone that he's confident in. So verse two, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. Then he talks about uh, God's people. Verse three, it's God's people, who, God's people who are all my delight. Uh, verse four, he won't run after other gods uh, like others might do because verse five, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. And then verse eight, I keep my eyes always on the Lord with him at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Uh, David in this psalm is expressing uh, the idea that uh, Christian theologians have called faith alone, uh, that it is in faith in uh, God alone for our salvation. And as it's fully revealed in the New Testament, it is faith in Christ alone, faith in what Christ has done uh, for our salvation. But it's not just faith in God for salvation, it's faith in God alone for the Christian life. Uh, we're not facing exactly what David was facing, but as we live through a, a time of crisis, uh, a time of, uh, of stress and pressure, uh, our faith is to be in God alone. It doesn't mean that we don't do other things, but the one that we look to, the one that we rely on, the one that we are confident in, uh, like uh, David, the one that we expect uh, relief from is God alone. That's why we pray, we express our dependence on God. Uh, well, the second half of the psalm uh, reflects on uh, what it means to be kept safe in God. And throughout the second half of the psalm, the emphasis is on joy, actually. Uh, joy uh, in the present, verse 9, and joy in the future. In verse 11, the, the, the joy in the present is there, verse 9. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. And uh, the Christian life, uh, even as we struggle with difficult circumstances, uh, God promises that we can have joy in our heart uh, because we know him. Uh, we know uh, the creator of the universe. And then he reflects on joy in the future. He reflects on the fact that uh, he will die. It's interesting. You know, my body will rest secure. Uh, you'll not abandon me uh, to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. Uh, there's a sense in which he will die, but not remain dead. And obviously this uh, psalm, these two verses are picked up by uh, Peter in his sermon uh, at Pentecost in Acts 2. And Peter's point is that uh, this was not actually fulfilled in the life of Jesus, in the life of David. It was fulfilled in the life of Jesus because Jesus did not remain in the grave. Uh, Jesus was raised uh, from the dead. So this 
Uh, Some, like so much of David's experience, is pointing forward to Jesus. He is the one who will ultimately uh, fulfill it. Uh, He is the one uh, who has been raised from the dead. He is the one who did not remain in the grave. And that for us is wonderful hope. Uh, Because Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, just as Christ uh, was raised, we will be raised uh, with him. Uh, We can uh, be confident uh, that just like Jesus did not remain in the grave, we won't remain in the grave, maybe for a while. But when Jesus returns, we will raise to be with him, rise to be with him in the air. And finally, this wonderful hope of uh, not just joy in the present, but verse 11, you have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. When we see God, uh, uh, when we see the Lord Jesus, we will be filled with joy. And then the last note of the psalm, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. What a wonderful uh, note of hope uh, for us. Um, it's e- it seems easy to say that as difficult as this world is, Uh, We know that we will have joy forever with uh, the Lord Jesus. But it is true. It is the truth of the Bible. It's the truth that has motivated Christians uh, for thousands of years. Uh, Eternal joy waits us in Christ's presence. Eternal pleasures at his right hand. Let's pray. Our Father, we do thank you that as we trust in you, as we lean on you alone, uh, you fill us with joy. And you promise uh, that one day we will rise uh, with the Lord Jesus and we will have joy forever. In the midst of very difficult circumstances, please would you encourage our hearts uh, with that wonderful truth. In Jesus' name. Amen.